Your Excellency, thank you so much uh, for taking our questions and thank you for making the time to talk to the Voice of America. I'm going to go right to it. I talk about uh, U.S. Uh, President Barack Obama, who basically criticized uh, some of uh, the foreign governments, uh, talking about the fact that uh, he doesn't think they're doing enough right now to curtail uh, the Ebola outbreak. And I'm going to uh, just read a quote from him saying that countries uh, that think that they can sit on the sidelines and just let the United States do it, that will result in a less effective response, a less speedy response, and that means that more people will die. What is your take on that? Well, let me thank you for, for this interview, the opportunity to be able to talk to uh, the communities, the librarians in the diaspora, our American brothers and sisters and the world at large, uh, that uh, we applaud the goodwill of the United States, the international community for coming to our aid. The Ebola crisis in West Africa has gotten out of control. It requires a concerted effort to be able to deal with that. We appreciate what has uh, been committed so far. The UN, the WHO, the United States government, President Obama coming out strong to encourage other world leaders to join this fight is just commendable. We need more support than we have we have gotten so far. So uh, well, pres President Obama is right. The world can no longer wait. As, as you wait, as you go through the bureaucracy, as you uh, involve the red tip, a lot of people are dying. Uh, I tell people that the Ebola virus is not a conventional warfare, that you can have peace conferences, you can go to meetings, and sit to discuss. Um, the more you wait, the more people are being infected and it could become a global issue rather than a regional issue. You, you touched on uh, the work that uh, some uh, organizations have been doing and there's the WHO, uh, the United States have sent troops uh, down there, the European Commission, the World Bank has uh, spent almost like $400 million. What do you need like immediately? We lack the basic necessities in terms of transporting affected people from the different communities to containment centers. In fact, we need more containment centers. We need more beds. We need uh, uh, ambulances to take people from the communities to, to the treatment centers. We need to train more uh, contact tracing agents. We need to train more community health workers. Part of the reason why the Ebola is, is spreading so fast in, in Liberia is due to the lack of ambulances. And so when affected people ride a public transportation or ride a taxi or a bus, and a group of people unknowingly ride a scene taxi, they get infected. So that, that, that is part of the reason why this thing is so prevalent in the cities. Secondly, the commitment we appreciate, but it's, it's time bound. It's, it's, if, if you commit whatever uh, your country or your organization is committing to the Ebola, can we have it now? I touched on the international community, but I also want to touch on the African community. Do you think that the African states, other countries that are not affected or directly affected by the outbreak, uh, who might eventually be affected, are doing enough to help out? Well, uh, we, we appreciate the, the collaborative efforts on our African brothers. Uh, Nigeria was one of the first to commit um, some cash. Gambia came on board, Senegal. Uh, was very helpful in allowing the airlines to use Senegal as a hub for West Africa when other institutions were thinking on banning flight to the affected country. So the African countries, the AU had committed uh, some, some uh, troops to, to go to Liberia with the support of UC. So the African continent is doing uh, their part, but uh, everyone needs to uh, step a little bit more. Well, you talked about Senegal, which uh, so far has had one case, um, and that's helping uh, in the flights. And speaking of flights, I know that some uh, U.S. Uh, lawmakers are coming out and talking about banning flights. I know that President Obama has been discouraging that. What kind of consequences can that have on, uh, on your country in particular? Our appeal is for the international community to help isolate Ebola, but not to isolate those countries that are affected. 
banning travels to, to, to those affected countries will mean a lot. We we'll have a setback in helping to, to contain the virus. We we'll have a setback for humanitarian effort going to those area philanthropic organizations that want to support even the economy is being affected indirectly. Uh, investors are holding back. Uh, people are not traveling back and forth. So we, we need the international community to look at these affected countries beyond the Ebola. And speaking of the economy, the short-term effects are absolutely uh, unthinkable, and uh, the long terms are even worse. What kind of effects are we seeing right now? Today, we are talking about ways to contain and stop the spread of Ebola. But we should also be thinking about post-Ebola recovery programs. Uh, the economies of Sierra Leone, Guinea, and Liberia are affected. Uh, Liberia was forced to uh, be able to, to report about 7.8% economic growth. That had been reversed. The nine, 10 years of relative peace, the nine, 10 years attempt to build the economy, to build the infrastructure, to, to create the environment, to, to, to encourage the private sector to come in, have been reversed because of this. Uh, so uh, currently, as I speak to you, civil servants are not working since August. The productive capacity has been uh, diminished. And if you cannot be producing, then it affects the overall GDP. Well, let's come back to the U.S. and talk about the Liberian community in general uh, at this point. What kind of uh, effect is it having in the Liberian community, meaning are there any stigmatization sometimes? The United States is a civilized country. Uh, we uh, do not envision uh, Liberians being stigmatized. Because I just I read a report actually today, today or yesterday, that talked about the fact that there are certain service providers, uh, like tutors, for example, that are um, basically being reluctant to go into some of the Liberian communities. Well, uh, you and I know that everyone would want to take precaution. Uh, it's a precautionary measure. I don't think they are doing it with the intent of trying to uh, 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 stigmatize Liberian communities or Liberian children. Let me touch on one point before I let you go, and this time it's the, about the media, and I'm just going from uh, uh, latest reports. Uh, basically, something that talks about the, the fact that a newspaper was uh, uh, maybe shut down for allegedly, I'm going to say allegedly, inciting uh, public, un uh, public um, unrest during this Ebola crisis. I'm just curious to know... Um, Basically, what kind of a, a, a restrictions or what kind of a relationship does the government has with the media right now? We have enjoyed a very good relationship with the media. Mm -hmm. We have press freedom in Liberia. The uh, uh, press union of Liberia worked very well with the with the with the government. Um, the issue of uh, private newspaper being closed, uh, I wouldn't know more than you know. Uh, I understand there were some um, uh, publications that needed questioning uh, and, uh, and the services had to be suspended while the investigation was going on. Um, I don't have the final report on that, but I, uh, to the best of my knowledge, I think that's what happened. Well, uh, let me ask you another quick question about actually political repercussions. We talked about uh, the immediate economic uh, issues that the Ebola outbreak is having in your country. But eventually, if this thing doesn't get contained, do you think it has a possibility of uh, creating political instability? Well, it, it could. I think you also heard world leaders like President Obama saying it could be a, a threat to peace and security. Uh, it could have not only economic impact, it could have political undertone. When, when people get nervous a little bit and get uh, frustrated sometimes, I think the best we can do is to stop the spread, to contain the virus, and the best place to fight it is at the source. We shouldn't wait until it is, it's all over the world before we start to get serious. Well, thank you. Thank you, and good luck with everything. It's a very uh, sad time. Uh, as you said, it's not just for Liberia. It's for the whole, uh, not just even West Africa, but the whole African continent and the rest of the world. So. Thank you. Thank you very much for your own effort, for your own support to, to get this word out to the community. We are very hopeful that this too shall come to pass.
Thank you. Thank you very much.